Look who that is. Natalie Wood. Famous people. Palm Springs Art. The Desert Arts Festival here in Francis Stevens Park. It's the last day. Yes. Francis Stevens Park and Senior Center. Having a good time. I'm going to bring some fun people to you here soon. And this is Paul Renner, one of the most prolific wildlife photographers and one of the greatest guys in the world at the show here today. So I wanted to ask Paul some questions about um, how he got started as a wildlife photographer. As a wildlife photographer, I was lucky. I was born and grew up in East Africa, so I just uh, got to know some Africans who taught me a lot about the wildlife. They uh, showed me how you... You keep talking louder. Oh, okay. How you uh, follow the animals, how you track the animals, you want to learn their habits. That way, when you want to go back, you can find them. And so, I had uh, been back and forth to Africa a few times. I started showing my photos in some art shows, and uh, people kept coming and asking me, Paul, I want to go to Africa. Who should I go with? So I decided, okay, I'll start leading tours, and I've been doing that now for seven years, and it's just been absolutely incredible. We go see this amazing wildlife, uh, teach people how to photograph while we're out there, and uh, everybody seems to love it. They come back and they go, Paul, that's the best thing I've ever done. And uh, it's just exciting. I mean, I can't believe I get to do this for a living. Tell us your favorite shortest story. Oh, you, my favorite short story. Yeah. It's actually a little long story, but anyway, <laughs> I'll cut it short. Um, when I, actually, when I was 15, I was out in uh, Africa, and a friend of mine came, or an African came running up, and he said, hey, I need some help. I said, I need you to come and shoot a hyena. And I said, what do you need me to shoot a hyena for? And I said, they don't bother anybody. And he said, well, actually, I thought you'd be afraid if I told you the truth. It's a leopard. He came and it just killed my dog in the middle of the day and right in front of my house. So there's something wrong with this leopard. So I said, well, let's go get a friend of mine who's willing to uh, hunt, hunt a leopard like that. So he went and he got, we went and we got Uncle Fred. I said, well, let's go get Uncle Fred. And Uncle Fred, uh, we went and found Uncle Fred. And he said, let's go get him. So he liked to hunt. And so we went out to this African's home, and it had killed a leopard had killed his dog in the cornfield right in front of his house. And so we had to go find this leopard in the cornfield. Well, Uncle Fred says, "Paul, you and Steve go sit in the car. I'm going to get on the house, on the roof of the house, have the Africans herd this leopard to me. They'll throw rocks and sticks and stuff." And so I thought, "This guy's crazy." So anyway, <laughs> about 15 minutes go by, and I hear Uncle Fred go, "I can see it! I can see it!" And he goes, "Keep throwing the rocks." So they start throwing more rocks, more rocks. Pretty soon, about another 15 minutes go by, and all of a sudden you hear, boom, he shot. And then it's totally quiet. No more noise, no more yelling, screaming, throwing sticks. It's just totally quiet. So I said, Steve, you think he got him? I said, I don't know. Let's go. Let's uh, let's go see. Let's go find Uncle Fred, because obviously they must have got him, because nobody's, you know, nobody's coming out. So we go running into the cornfield, and we're looking around. All of a sudden, Uncle Fred goes, what are you guys doing in here? And I said, well, we thought you shot this leopard, so we came in to find you. And he goes, well, now you're in here with a wounded leopard. You stay right with me. And uh, Uncle Fred says, just stay right close. Don't be wandering off. Stay right close, because a wounded leopard will attack anything. And so right about that time, I saw this leopard. There was a few blood spots where he had wounded the leopard. And you could see the tracks going into this real thick patch of corn. So I said, Steve, let's avoid that corn, because the leopard's right there. Right about, I finished saying that, and all of a sudden you hear this roar, this loud roar. And I'd always heard the leopards don't roar, but this one roared. And it came, all of a sudden I hear yelling, screaming, and there's people running and yelling. And, and so we just started running. Let's get out of here, quick. We start running as fast as we can, get out of there. And finally we get out of the cornfield, we jump up on the roof of a house, and we think, okay, let's just wait. I forgot to tell you part while we were running out. We finally heard a gunshot. And so... Uncle Fred, uh, I figured Uncle Fred must have shot the leopard. So then all of a sudden we hear another gunshot, two shots. I thought, wow, that's weird. But it sure took a long time for him to, to, to hear the gunshot. So anyway, we waited on the roof. We think, well, they must have got it, two shots. So we're waiting on the roof, waiting on the roof. 15, 20 minutes go by. Finally, this African comes winding, his, riding his bicycle through a little path through the cornfield. And uh, I said, hey, did you uh, see anybody hunting a leopard? He goes, oh, yeah, they shot a leopard, but they're waiting for some guys so they can take somebody to the hospital. I said, Steve, they're waiting for us. Let's go. So we jump off the roof, go running through the cornfield. Now Uncle Fred's mad at us again. How come you guys aren't here? I said, well, we, we ran when, you, when the leopard started roaring and scaring everybody. Well, get in the car, and I'll tell you the story. So we get in the car, and we're bombing along to the uh, hospital. 
And I looked back, and this guy's arm was just mangled. It's just, and Uncle Fred said, well, Paul, he goes, you almost got bit by that leopard. He goes, you were three feet from the guy that he attacked. And I said, really? And he goes, when the, when the guy who said, there he is, and you, uh, the leopard jumped at him, he said, you were about three feet away from him. And the leopard knocked him down. He goes, I went to shoot, but I tripped over a corn stalk, fell down right next to the guy. And the leopard was standing with his, his front paws on the African, biting his arm, because fortunately he held his arm in the leopard's mouth. Back feet were on my chest. I had to push the leopard off, get over, get my gun, get back up and shoot it. That's why it took so long to hear the first gunshot. He said, after I shot it, the leopard ran over, laid back down again, so I shot it one more time to make sure it was dead. But he goes, you were so lucky because you were only three feet from the guy who got caught by that leopard. So, but that's the story. Uncle Fred shot that leopard and uh, we got it. But what we found out was the leopard's paws were full of porcupine quills and his mouth was full of porcupine quills and he'd gotten infected so he couldn't hunt normally and that's why he went and attacked this dog. So normally leopards will stay away from people, stay away from dogs. If they don't, then there's usually something wrong with them. Good to know, good yeah. to know. So when's your next safari? Not till May. Uh, today is Monday, got back last Monday, but I don't go again till May. I go to Botswana. Can't wait to be there again. Tell everybody your website and how to find out more information about what you do. Um, rennersafaris.com. That's spelled R-E-N-N-E-R, -E safaris, S-A-F-A-R-I-S.com. So uh, hope you take a look. Thanks. Join me on Safari.